بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد مولانا أشرف يتحاني رحمة الله عليه منشن الثوري he says what that مولانا قاسم نانوت رحمة الله عليه he became ill and when he was ill uh, performing wudu was harmful for his illness yes but he decided uh, he wanted to do amal on the azimah and he said even though it's harmful for me or it's difficult for me it's mashaqqa I am still going to do wudu. So when the people suggested to him, he said um, that I prefer to do amal on the azima. So we continue with that. A few days later, when I yaqum nanot yusab rahmatullah, he went to visit him. And he found out that he was still using wudu. And so then he said to him that you should, uh, that I'm doing wudu. So I said to him that I'm doing wudu, ihtiyatan for ihtiyat and precaution. And I'll do amal in the azima. You have two choices. Azima is the main ruling, the asal ruling, the original ruling, and the rukhsa is a leeway that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. So he said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a rukhsa, then to try to stick firm to the azima, he says this is like trying to show Allah your bravery and trying to show the lie I'm very strong. Again, there's different ways of looking at it. One, one is that, no, I love you so much, I want to do the harder thing to please you. Saying, no, you should show humility that oh, I am very weak and the option that you have given us to do tayammum now instead of wudu because of my illness I am in need of you, I am humble, I need this so uh, again, it is both ways, not only one way that this, this, this is what you should always do so some people look at it this way that uh, Allah, out of my love for you, what do, I, what do I want to do? carry out the action that you have made compulsory upon us and the other one is Allah, I am so humble, I am so weak, I am your weak servant so that the, the the ijazah that you've given us, the ruqsa that you've given us, I'm going to take that ruqsa because I'm a weak servant of yours. So in one of them, you're showing your humility, your helplessness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the other one, you're trying to show your desire to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in different circumstances, different people have different dhawq and different, the natures go to different ways. But there's a, there's, a, there's a spectrum in between and it is extreme on both ways. So the extreme of when you have to do amal on ruqsa and you still do amal on azimah, then that's a sin. And when you're not allowed to do amal on the ruqsa, you still do ruqsa, that's a sin. And in between, certain people choose different things when there's both or possibilities. That's why there was, um, uh, there was Sufyan al-Thawri, I think, or Sufyan al So There were two brothers, I can't remember the name of the brothers. So one of them used to say that there's two possibilities. Uh, that I am involved in a difficulty and a hardship. And I do sabr. This is more beloved to me than me being in good status and I do shukar. Yes? So in both of these situations, both of them are, you're doing what? Fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other brother used to say, no. I would rather be in a good state and an easy state and I do shukar than being in a musibah and a ibtila and I am being patient. So somebody asked, uh, Sufyan al-Uyayna, Sufyan al-Thawri, one of the two of them, or to one of the other tabin, tabu tabin. So he said, I prefer the statement of, that an uafia, an uafia, an uafa, wa ashkur, ahabu ilayya. This is more beloved to me. Why? Because sabr and shukr are both a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you say that I prefer to be in sabr, as if you are trying to say to Allah that I am, I have the strength to bear this, this illness. Do you understand? I remember once uh, uh, we have Umrah, we have Mona Salim Sabah, he was a feeling man. So when he went to visit, he said to Mona Yusuf Sab, he was said, oh, you know, he was not well, so he said, you know, he said, how, are you? how are you talking? He goes, um, not been well, and a bit, you know, a bit sad that I'm not going to go to Haram. He goes, kindly, he would try to be sorry, no, he do told him, if you're not feeling well, get yeah, your beast and go to sleep, put, 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 go to bed, cover your blanket and go to sleep. Because that's what I want from you. So the maqsood is not that you go to the Haram, or maqsood is that you stay, uh, go, go, stay in bed. Maqsood, whatever state Allah keeps you in, you'll be happy on that state. So if Allah has kept you sick whilst in the Haram, yes, naturally you have a, you have a tab'an, tab'an. Like not natural, like a regret that I wish I could have been in haram. But aqlan, you think, well, this is Allah's decree for me. So if you don't have even a tab'an regret, that, like, that, you know, I'm in haram and I'm missing out on the, on the haram, I'm missing out on the masjid, the mawiyah, masjid, the uh, haram, the masjid, on the tawaf, then you, but after the tab'i thing, well, the aqlan, Allah wants this for me. So I wish I could have been haram, but I can't because I'm not well, so just go to sleep. That's Allah's taqdi and you'll get thawab in there, inshaAllah. Do you understand? That's why it comes in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that when uh, a person, he does good deeds and he becomes sick or he becomes a traveler, Allah writes his reward for him. 
So, tabaan, you think, oh, I'm missing on my, my, my tilawa, I'm missing my dhikr, I'm missing my class because I'm traveling. But in tabaqlan, you think, well, this is muqaddar, nothing else I can do. I am sick, so I can't, I can't go to class, can't go to murdisa, can't go to tilawa, can't go to dhikr, missing tarawi, missing a fast. So tabaan, naturally, like a, as a human instinct, you feel, I'm missing out on a Ramadan fast. But then aqlan, you say, well, this is Allah taqdeer. Do you understand? Mm-hmm.